16. Family, I want to show you something today. Uh, I get a lot of questions on it. Uh, this is not legal advice, nor will I guide you on how to fill out anything that I present for you today. The comments will also be disabled because I don't want any feedback. I want you to think for yourselves. I want you to research for yourselves. And after you do your research and you think for yourselves, maybe we can have a conversation at a later date. But for now, I am not entertaining any questions on these uh, particular documents. I want you to uh, educate yourself. It's very important. Also, a lot of the stuff that I share you know, has links and there will be people that are willing to get into a discussion about these things with you. Um, I am not one of them. I am not going to give you any information on this. Or, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you any advice uh, other than I know for a fact that 98% of the people in America <laughs> need to be filling out this form and not the W-2. I'm sorry, W-4. All right, so that's the best I'll give. But um, let's go into it real fast. Um, I wanted to start with here. The W-8 bin. Years ago, the IRS, um, well, actually, the W-8 still exists. There's a W-8 form that foreign persons, foreign people, non-resident aliens is the correct terminology, was filling out. Uh, there are some people still filling out their form, the W-8. And for sake of argument, I'll pull that up and let you see it, what I'm talking about. Give me one second. Close that window. I'll reopen it for you. Give me a second. But um, notice this form here. As a matter of fact, hold on. One second. W8. It comes right up. But let me leave this up so you guys can see this while I'm doing what I'm doing over here. About W8, W8 form, W8. I think this is it here. Yes, it is. Okay, let me bring it on your side so you can see it. This is the W-8 form. I believe the last update was in 1992 or 1993 or something like that. And this is what, well, I think it was, uh, this has been updated or modified because some of the stuff, some of the information in here was different from what I uh, was instructed. All right, so this is the W-8, Certificate of Foreign Status. And if you don't understand why you have been considered foreign, you need to press stop on this recording and go check another video. <laughs> I cannot go into why you would be foreign to Internal Revenue Service and where the Internal Revenue Service is located and the difference between the United States and the United States of America. By now, you should be well educated on the conversation. All right. So anyway, that's the W-8. Here's the W-8 bin. I have filled out a W-8 bin and submitted it to my employer on several occasions. However, I did not use this form. <laughs> Certificate of Foreign Status of Beneficial Owner for the United States Tax Withholding and Reporting Individuals. Prior to me actually submitting this form, I got information that caused me to use this form. W8 Ben, Certificate of Foreign Status of Non-Residents for United States Tax Withholding Reporting, human. They are uh, masters at 
wordplay and their term for individuals is different than your regular definition of individuals. So even if you fill out this form and it breaks down what you are considering an individual to be when you sign it, they still will interpret it in their way what it means. So I'm going to try to put these side by side so you can see the difference in the two forms. Name of human applicant, name of individual who is a beneficial owner. Um, some other things that stand out is number five, U.S. taxpayer identification number, SSN, if required. And I can't see the bottom of my screen. Excuse me a second here. If required, not required. And if you look on this side here, taxpayer, taxpayer identification number. The wiggle room, as I would like to say, is different. All right. So they're breaking down why it's not required on the human form. It's more protections. There's more protections on this form than is per on this form here. Also, in the certification, notice how it breaks everything down as opposed to over here. I am the individual that is a beneficial owner. Over here, I am the human who is a non-resident or I'm authorized to sign for the human that is a non-resident. So you might want to find this form, W.A. Ben Human. If you Google W.A. Ben Human, you should get it. All right. Next information for you guys. You do not want to fill out, this is not legal advice. You do not want to fill out a W-4 for your employer. Come on screen. You do not want to fill out a W-4 for your employer. Those of you that do and you saw the last video where you can claim exempt or you put the correct um, They're not dependents, allowances, allowances, where you put correct the, put the correct allowances, that's great. That'll work out for you. However, if you are a little more educated and you don't mind standing up for your rights, you will be filling out a W-8 bin, but you must submit different forms with it. And what do I mean by that? One second, let me pull the form up. You want to give an affidavit or fill out and provide an affidavit of citizenship, domicile, and status. The WA bin in this form goes together. Excuse me for scrolling too fast, but I want you to see, I want you to see the bottom of this page here. Enclosures. The WA bin or WA EXP. And the withholding attachment form is supposed to go with these forms. Now, let me tell you this as well. SEDM is the author, is the supplier of this form. If you look at the bottom of the screen, their website is here, SEDM.org. If you are not a member of SEDM.org, you are prohibited from using their forms. In order to become a member, you go to their website, you're going to fill out a statement page, and you must fax it into them. They will keep your name on file. That's all I mean. You're not giving them your social. You're not giving them a bunch of information, your address, and all of that stuff. You're just going to be in their database as a member. Now, you must, you should be in good standing, whereas you're following the prerequisites of being a member. So that if, in fact, you need to get their assistance on defending yourself against that monstrosity called the Internal Revenue Service, they will help you in that endeavor. So you might want to look into being a member before you use their forms or create your own and submit it. 
that's a lot more work. But if you don't want to comply, then it's on you. Now, if you use their forms and you try to defend yourself, you cannot, and you're not a member, they're not, they're going to, they're going to shun you. They're going to act like they don't know you. I'll let you know that up front. All right. So their information is freely accessible. Now, most of it or a good part of it um, as a non-member, a good portion of it is available to you. You can use it, get it notarized, present it. But in order to enforce it or have them back you up, you should be a member. Okay. So getting it out the way, let's go into the form. You want to fill out an affidavit of citizenship, domicile, and tax status. This, this highlights or gives notice of what your status is, what your standing is, and this is what you will present to a bank. You will present this to DME. You will present this to the Motor Vehicle Commission. You will present this to... Um, voting agencies, let them know what your status is. You would go through these and fill out, check the boxes of what applies to you, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, whether you have a state issued married license, that are, you know, this is actually an affidavit. So your truth needs to be your truth. If you have a marriage license, you would say yes. If you have a driver's license, you would say yes, you know, and your truth is your truth. You would, <clears throat> excuse me, Sign this under penalties of perjury. If I'm not mistaken, you uh, you get it, yeah, under penalties of perjury, and you will get a notary certification of it. All right, and this is what you're going to submit to your employer to verify, validate your status, either non-taxpayer or other. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to figure these things out, people. I'm just presenting the information to you, all right? So along with your WA bin that you would give to your employer, instead of a W-4, you would give them the affidavit of citizenship, domicile and tax status. You would give them the tax form attachment, which I'm pulling over now. One second. Tax form attachment. Now, you can Google these. You see this line up here? Put that into your search column or Google um, withholding tax form attachment, yada, 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 and read it. The purpose of this form, who it's for, this organization did all of the work for you. And I am not in the business of recreating the will. I'm just here to present to you what I found myself and what I use myself, all right? So it breaks down the, st the statutes, the codes, the reasons behind what you're doing, um, it's your backup, all right? So you want to fill this out. And again, I'm not going to go through the form of how and what you fill out, but you want to fill this form out. I believe you sign at the bottom of this page coming up. I don't believe this one is required to be notarized. I, for the most part, notarize all my documents but this is not required to be notarized. <clears throat> if you get the version where you are able to edit the PDF, you can take some information out that you don't agree with and sign it and submit it, all right? That's the tax form attachment. This goes along with the WA bin and the Affidavit of Citizenship, Domicile and Tax Status, okay? And we have one more for you and I believe it is why uh, you're not why you shouldn't be filling out oh I'm sorry there's another one here very important forms people affidavit of exemption from withholding in lieu of a W-4 if you have an employer that forces you uh, they, they can't force you, but there's some places where you might feel that your job is in jeopardy and you just want to succumb and give them a W-4 other than writing um, sign under the rest or whatever words you want to put on the bottom, you know, sign in protest, whatever. You would give them this form as well. And 
it breaks down that you had no liability. And this, if you look on um, the W-4 on my last video, where it talked about you had no income, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, you're not liable for tax, federal taxes for the last year, and you have no liability for the upcoming year. This is more or less a affidavit stating that, that you would submit with your W-4. I mean, you could just put exempt in the column, you know, if you don't have liability for the last year and for the upcoming year, and that would be sufficient. But this is something that you could give with your W-4 if you gave in or if you are compelled to give in W-4. All right. <clears throat> just want to show these to you. <clears throat> FamGuardian.org and SEDM.org are like sister companies. Uh, the information is inter interchangeable and I uh, believe they are two different companies or two different organizations that work with each other. All right. And um, you, if you become a member of one, I believe you are a member of the other. Don't take my word for it. Look into it. Okay. Next. There's another form. Okay. Right here. Why is it illegal? Why is it illegal for me to request or use a tax by the taxpayer identification number? TIN. You will fill this form out and you'll also give this to your employer because on your W-8 bin, let me pull that up real fast. On your W-8 bin, you are not supposed to give them a, what's this here? Well, let's use this one anyway. No, let's use human because I suggest, I'm not telling you to, but I suggest you use human, but uh, okay. You're not supposed to give a identifying number, i.e. social. You're not supposed to give in your social. So the form here, affidavit of why you're not responsible, oh, I'm sorry, I'm quoting it wrong. Why is it illegal? Right here. Why is it illegal for me to request or to use a taxpayer identification number? This gives you the evidence and the documentation that you need to present to your job as to why you can't be compelled to give your social. This states all the laws, states all the codes, and et cetera, of which they can't deny. Now, if they still say, oh, no, you got to do this, you got to do that, make sure you document and have proof that you submitted this to your job. My advice was to, is to mail it in, certified mail return receipt with certificate of service. So you can't, so they can't say they didn't receive it, but if you are bold enough to actually enforce rights, you want to make sure that you did it, whereas you have proof that you submitted this stuff because they'll easily put your social, because for instance, I had a, a job where a background check is required. So I had to submit my social because I didn't want any problems to arise, whereas they would say that I was ineligible. So under protest, I've submitted my, you know, my social and I let them know that the social is only for background check purposes. It is absolutely not to be used for taxes. And this is documentation of which I gave them. So now they may internally put your social on your W-4 form or on your forms, even if you told them not to. So now they're withholding from you and they use that social to report. If you document yourself and you submit your documents to them in such a way whereas you've covered your trail, then you can protect yourself. Okay, um, that's that.
So that's the affidavit. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is why it's illegal for you to use taxpayer identification numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, each of these forms come replete with information that you can research and come to the conclusion of whether you want to use it or not, whether you fit the description of what they're claiming here, whether you think it's bogus or you think it's legit, you know, you have to stand on your own square. You have to figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it. And there are some people that have already created the will and I like to put it on my vehicle and roll with it instead of making my own wills. <laughs> they already roll. They roll fine. I'd rather use already created wills, but you got to be careful. So you might want to read all of this and make sure you, what you're agreeing to be a part of or you want to agree as to the terms that they're using that you agree with them. All right? So don't just take my word for it. Don't believe me. I'm not going to tell somebody that they need to fill out a W-8 bin and they don't understand that they're foreign. So now when they're questioned, they say, well, Bud told me to use it. And don't point the finger at me. You need to do your homework to figure out why, how, what. All right? So don't point to me. Um, I use this because I can back up what I am and I claim to be. So you have to be able to stand on your own square as well. They submit these documents that you sign under penalty of perjury or that you got notarized. You need to be able to defend this stuff. All right? So do your homework. Do your homework. And once you give a WA Ben, you've given your affidavit of citizenship, domicile, tax status, you've given in your tax form attachment, etc. You have everything that you need to keep them from withholding from your finances. <laughs> now, if in the case where I, where this, this applies to myself, you work for a state or a city agency and they will withhold anyway, what you will need to do, what you should do is find this form, which you can easily Google it, but I'm putting it on the screen and you can always refer back to this video to find it, which I just lost it. Give me a second, I'll find it again. Right here, okay. This is a 10 or 1001 form from the IRS, Department of Internal Revenue Service. You know, look this up, 1001, look up yourself, Google it. It's an ownership exemption or reduced rate certificate. What the hell is that? Okay. Why are you a beneficial owner? You really need to do your research, people. You really do. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to click. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what to click. But what you would do is you would also fill in the year that you want to be blah and the amount that they took out. And you assign it and give it to them. Now, File this form with your withholding agent. I'm going to go back to the other forms and I'll show you where they say that your job is not supposed to share it with the IRS because you're making a contract between you and your withholding agent or you and your job. Look, look down here. General instructions. Do not file this form with the IRS. Instead, file it with your withholding agent. You'll find this same statement on other forms of which you were just advised to look up and perhaps submit. So now you will fill this form out because the monies that was withhold from you is yours. When they withhold money from your paychecks, your jobs, they put it into a main bank account everybody's withholdings goes into one main bank account and it's held there and it collects interest. Then at such a time as the IRS uh, instructs 
your job to send over the withholding, they send them what they need to send minus the interest. So they're making money. Your job is making money off of your money. And then they send in your withholding to these people. Now, prior to them sending your money in, if you submit this form, your withholding agent is supposed to refund you your money. I certify that the information entered above is correct. And if a reduced rate of tax or exemption from tax applies, I further certify I have complied with all requirements to qualify for the reduced rate or tax or exemption or reduced rate of tax or exemption from tax. You sign it, you date it, and the withholding agent releases your funds. You don't get a refund from the Internal Revenue Service. You get your money back from your withholding agent, i.e. your job. All right? So recap. You're going to do the WA bin, not the individual's one. So let's close that box. You're going to do the WA bin. which I'm trying to find now, right there. You're going to do a WA bin, and for use by humans, only humans can use this, <laughs> give this form to the withholding agent or payer. Do not send to the IRS. <laughs> Somewhere in the wording of this document, it either be this one or the tax form attachment, it outlines, I know, I think it's in the um, affidavit of withholding um, tax um, status, withholding, right here. It will inform that your, your withholding agent that they are not allowed to give your information over to the IRS. Here's tax withholding. You won't, may not legally withhold any amount from my earnings. It's already put, you put in them on notice. You're giving them this documentation of which most of them won't read. So you're going to find out that they're not going to take federal taxes out. They may take state, they may take Social Security, Medicaid, yada, yada, yada. But this, with this form, they're not supposed to take anything out. Everything is laid out in this form. Everything. So as long as you comply with your part and you give them notice and you let them know what your status is, you can then go and fill out your 1001 or 10001 form and reclaim the monies that was taken from you. I think that is all you guys need to see for today. You got a lot to study, <laughs> a lot to catch up on, but very important, very important documentation. Um, you should also have filled out a form 56 you should have done a revocation of election um i'll leave it there all right so do your homework people you don't want to be fleeced from a system that is designed to fleece those that don't know any better but when you know better you're obligated to do better so signing out, I thank you for your time. Thank you for paying attention. I thank you for um, increasing your knowledge. All right? Once again, the comments will be disabled for this video. Please don't comment on any other video about this particular video. I'd appreciate it. You can always email me at webmaster at budbrownsville.com, which will be in the, um, the bottom of this video. And, you know, tell me what you think. <laughs> um, make your comments. Do not ask me how to fill out these forms. If you are looking for links because you can't find them yourself, maybe you're looking at this video on your phone <clears throat> and you're not looking it up via your PC, which you probably may not have, or you are looking for these forms and can't find them, you know, email me and I'll be glad to send you these forms. All right? So do your due diligence. You know, stay on your square, protect yourself. All right. This is Bud Brownsville. You can find me on YouTube here. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. 
Instagram. All right. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And peace out. Thanks for watching.